Hi folks, welcome back to Tactics Corner, where the idea is to bring a little order to the chaotic game we all love so much. This morning I'm looking back at yesterday's Via Play Cup Final, specifically the schemes, ploys, blown plays, moments of wit and wisdom, whatever you want to call it, that decided the game. The Rangers effectively tried to match up to Celtic in a 4-3-3 shape that relies on timing, cohesion, getting your spaces absolutely right. The problem for Michael Beale is his team aren't as good at making this work as Celtic. Their attempts to press high were disjointed, huge gaps between the front three and midfield. That meant Ange Postacoglu's men could play through that first line far too easily. Celtic were also able to drive in at that golden zone between the Rangers midfield and defence, partly because of how they used their fullbacks, either tucking in alongside Cal McGregor or going in a more traditional overlap position. Even before they scored, they were exploiting Malik Tillman's area at the park. As you can see from this little clip, Taylor gets the ball, spots Atate and Moy on the wrong side or right side, depending on your perspective, of the Rangers midfield three of Tillman, Lundstrom and a slightly disconnected Glenn Kamara. From there, it's a straight pass, straight ball and they're in. One recurring theme was the amount of time and space Callum McGregor got on the ball. As you can see here, it's just a disjointed press by Rangers. You've got their front three there, two of their midfield line further back. Look at all that space, nobody in the same postcode as him. He's got time, he's got room, he's also got both his full backs up alongside him, which gives him options. The opening goal was all about the Celtic midfield, which has to include the full backs because of the way they play. They exploited in the weak spot that they'd spotted. So it begins with Hitati riding a challenge. He sees Moy again in that dangerous area. Taylor's getting on his bike before Hatati even releases the ball because he knows Moy's going to turn, draw defenders, play him in, cross, go. Rangers were never going to just lie down, obviously, and there were fleeting moments at the start of the second half. Uh, this is nice from Barisic and Kent. Just a little give and go. They've exploited the fact there's a big gap between right back Alistair Johnson, centre half Cameron Carter Vickers. Play the ball in, get it back, win a corner out of that one. Rangers also look good when they manage to win the ball back quickly, like Tillman won it quite high up here from Taylor, and it ends with a four on three break. Tillman, Kent, Sakala, Morelos against three Celtic defenders. Taylor's out of position. Moy's on the wrong side as well. But it's the Celtic midfield runners who make all the difference. The second goal is a case in point. McGregor makes a nice run, finds Moy. Then again, it's Moy and Hatate combining. Straight run, straight pass. Kyogo's crashing that six yard box, knowing he's going to get a goal. Celtic didn't exactly park the bus, and Rangers had some chances even at 2 1 when they got themselves back in the game through the Morelos goal. They had this three on three uh, Cantwell, Morelos, and Sakala. So there were opportunities to hit on the counter. Conclusions then, well, Celtic are more mature, more rounded, more well-practiced team than their nearest rivals. They deserve their win, even though we all know that Postacoglu will be spending today picking over the fine details of what his boys could have done better. Rangers were just disjointed on and off the ball. They couldn't cope with Celtic's movement. They can't have many complaints about the result, and they'll have plenty to mull over before these teams meet again. When will we meet again? Well, I'm off next week. But stay tuned. Same bat time, same bat channel, the following week. And don't forget to keep visiting Record Online for all your best football coverage. Cheers.